Welcome back. So when I initially introduced jQuery, I mentioned that it helps us do things like select elements, manipulate them, add event listeners, then I also mentioned that it helps with effects and animations. So in this video, I'm going to do a quick preview of some of those built-in effects. In particular, I'm going to show two broad categories of effects, fading effects and slides. So I'm on the jQuery docs here on the effects category. You can see there are quite a few methods that have to do with effects. And I'm going to start by showing the fade effects. So I'm going to look at fade out to start. What fade out does is you select an element with a dollar sign or a set of elements and you call dot fade out on it and it will animate that element from full opacity down to full transparency or zero opacity. So it basically fades an element out and you can provide a duration if you want it to be slow or fast or very slow. You can provide a number of milliseconds. The default is 400 milliseconds. And then you can provide a callback to run at the end, which I'll show in just a moment. So I'm going to make a new file here to demonstrate this, effects.html, and I'll just copy over our structure from the last demo page, and this one we'll call jQuery effects. So we have that set up, and I'm going to get rid of all of this content here. And then I'm going to add in a few divs. Let's do three divs, and we're going to use these divs and fade them out and animate them and slide them up and down. Um, and so I'm going to give them some content inside. This first one will be, please don't fade me. Next one, I'm begging you, please. And then lastly, we'll have one that says, help, help, help. So these divs uh, are desperate not to be faded away. Unfortunately, today's not their lucky day, and we are going to be fading them out. So to make this clearer, I'm going to add in some style here to our divs so that they have a color that we can see fade away. And they also have a width and a height that we can see slide up and down. So I'm going to select all divs and give them a width of 100 pixels and a height of 100 pixels and a color or background of teal. And let's save. And we'll open this up. We have three divs. However, I'd like them to be on the same line. So one way to do that is with float left. Now they're all on the same line, but they bleed into one another. So to fix that, we can add a margin. So we'll just do a margin of 20 pixels on all sides. Now we end up with three squares, and they each have some text inside. And we really don't need to go overboard styling them, because all we're going to do is demonstrate how we can fade them in and out. So I'm going to add a button up top here. And this button will just say, click me. And when we click this button, what will happen is that our animations will run. So I click this, and these three items should fade out to start. So to reiterate, fade out will take an element from full opacity or whatever opacity it's currently at and fade it to the point of full transparency. So it looks like this, select dot fade out, and we can provide an optional string of the speed, so slow or fast, or we can give it a number of milliseconds. So let me show you that now. I'm actually going to do this in a separate file. So I'm going to make a JavaScript file and save. I'll call it effects.js. Save that. Add my alert. Connected. And link this together correctly. At the bottom, just add a script tag. Source equals effects.js. And if we refresh, we get our connected alert. So what we want to do here is fade these divs out. So we need to select the divs, just like that, then dot fade out, and then we can provide a speed or just leave it like that. And if that's all we want to do, I'll refresh. And you can see as the page loads, they start to fade out. So let's actually make that happen when we click the button. So we're going to want to do dollar sign button dot, and we can either do dot click or I'll do dot on click and then pass in our callback function so when we click we'll then fade out all the divs just like that and now we'll refresh and if I click you can see they all fade out so as I mentioned we can provide a number here something like 1000 which is a full second and if I refresh you'll see when I click 
it takes a full second for them to fade out. An important point about fade out is that if I inspect the page here and I look at the elements, our divs are still in the HTML, they're still in the DOM, we just don't see them because their display has been set to none. So it doesn't delete them or it doesn't remove them from the page, it's just hiding them. And that's definitely an important distinction. So let's say that I wanted to just print a message once the divs had faded out. So I would fade them out and then do something like this, fade completed as a console.log. And if I run this, I'll open the console and watch the order that things happen. So when I click here, I get fade completed way before the fade is actually done. So what happens here is that we select all the divs and we start the fade out, but it takes a full second. And JavaScript doesn't wait for that second to finish before it moves on to the next line. It immediately moves on to this line and prints out fade completed, and then the fade out finishes. So if we want code to happen right after the fade out finishes, we want it to be guaranteed to be after, we can pass in a callback here. And so this callback will be called inside of the fade out automatically when it's done. So I'm going to move our console.log right there and save. And if I refresh, and now I click, the fade out finishes, and then we get three fade completed console.logs for each one of those. A more common scenario, rather than just printing out a string in the console, is to actually remove the elements once we fade them. So I mentioned that they're just hidden, they're not actually gone, and if we wanted to delete them, like on our to-do list we're going to build, when we click on the trash can next to an item, we want it to fade out slowly, do a nice animation, but then also just delete off the, the page entirely, off the DOM. So we need to use a method called remove, and we only want to remove it after the fade out is finished. So that looks like this. We'll just do this dot remove. And what this will do is wait until the fade out is finished. And for each div, it will run the remove method on it. So I'll refresh and click on click me. They fade out. And then if we go over to elements, you can see that our body only has a button now and a script tag. All of the divs are completely gone. And if I comment that line out and refresh, you can see, well, they start here, three divs, and I click on the button, and all that happens is they fade away, and then display is set to none. So if I put my code in the wrong place, and I ran the remove method down here, I did all divs dot remove, just like that, what would actually happen is that the order is not guaranteed, and this is going to take a full second and this code won't wait for that second to finish. So it will start the fade out and then run remove immediately after. So that ends up looking like this, where it starts a fade and just immediately after it removes them. So it's basically no fade at all. So that's why jQuery provides this callback because it's pretty common for us to wanna to do something after we fade something out or after we slide something down or whatever the animation is. So that brings me to my next point which is that I want to show some of the other animations that we can do. So we can also fade things in. So if I set the display to be none from the beginning, like this, and I refresh, we don't see the divs because now they're hidden. Rather than fading them out when we click, we can fade them in. And it works just like you would expect. Click on the button, and they fade in over a second. And then if we want to run some code afterwards, when we know that they're done fading in, we can put some code inside of the callback here. All right, so that's fade in. jQuery provides one more nice fade method, which is called fade toggle. And fade toggle works the same way. I provide a number of milliseconds, and it will know if it needs to fade something in or out, depending on if it's currently showing or not. So if I refresh and I click on fade toggle, it starts by fading them all in, and then fading them all out and back in, it's basically like adding a class to the class list or using toggle class with jQuery, where it just decides if it needs to fade in or fade out. All right, so that's fading. The next set of effects that I wanna demonstrate are the sliding effects. So down here, we have a slide down, slide toggle, and slide up. So I'll start with slide down. And what it does is it takes an element that's currently not showing rather than animating the opacity on an element, like fade does, 
it actually animates the height of an element. So I'll show you how that works. We're just going to change this. Rather than fade toggle, we'll just slide down. And that's because when we refresh, our elements are hidden. So if I run slide down, when we click on a button, you'll see that the height is animated down. And same thing goes for slide up. It does the opposite. So if I get rid of display none so that they are showing, and now I click on the button, their height is animated and they slide upwards. And then display is set to none at the end. And the other method is slide toggle, which works just like um, fade toggle, where it decides what to do. So if I click, they slide up, and now they slide down, and back up, and down. So that's all there is to slide up, slide down, and slide toggle. They work just like their fade analog methods. Uh, there's also a optional callback that we can pass in. So if we give a duration, like one second, and then I can give my callback in, and I'll just do another console.log at the end. Slide is done. And that will only print out once the full second slide has finished. So I refresh, let's look at the console, and I click on click me. And you can see this only printed once the slide was done. Same thing here, pay attention right here. This will change to six. There we go. But again, a more common pattern is to remove the items. Once we've slided them out or faded them out or whatever we've done is to remove them. So here it will take a second to slide them and then they're removed from the page. And if we go to the elements tab, our body is empty except for that button and the script. So hopefully that gave you a good idea of how some of the effects in jQuery work. These are by far the most common fading and sliding, and we're going to use them inside of our to-do list app, which we're going to start in the next video.